Today I've got the 6 best PC hardware Amazon Prime Day deals, Intel's next gen flagship has lower and higher clocks, I have confirmation from AMD on the x870 board's release, and Nvidia's RTX 5000 cards get insane TDP with a huge gap between the RTX 5090 and 5080 yet again. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and today marks the start of this year's Amazon Prime Day sales event and with it comes some really good deals on PC hardware. So I'm going to go over some of the best ones and of course I'll have all of these down in the description below as affiliate links. They don't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out. Either way, first up, if you aren't already a Prime member, Amazon is doing a 30 day free trial so if you just want to pick something up really quickly and then cancel or something like that, you can do that without actually spending any money. And the first real deal that we have here comes from Corsair. As you can see, their fully modular power supply in 80 plus gold PSU, 850 watts, is down to just $95. That's a 37% drop, making it for honestly a really good deal, especially given the TDP that you're going to see towards the end of this video. Next up is AMD's Ryzen 9 7900X3D. This bad boy is actually cheaper right now than the 7800X3D. Now, with that said, yes, the 7800X3D does in fact beat it at gaming, mostly because it's 12 cores split up where there's six with 3D vCache and six without, versus the 7800X3D, which only has eight, all of which are 3D vCache, but when it comes to more professional workloads, the 7900 X3D completely crushes the 7800X3D and it's still pretty decent at gaming. This one is down to $327.99. Now, if you're more interested in Intel's chips, they actually have the 13,900K, which is currently 34% off. Now, this one is, of course, a last gen processor, but it's, it's pretty much neck and neck. It's only slightly slower than the newer 14,900K, yet that is significantly more expensive. So that obviously does make this a very nice deal. Moving on, we actually have 32 gigabytes of DDR5 in a pretty attractive looking kit, I will say, at 6,000 megahertz, and this one comes with both Intel's XMP or AMD's Expo memory overclocking for just 88 bucks. Moving on to storage, we have the tried and true Samsung 990 Pro SSD. This is a PCI Express Gen 4 SSD and two terabytes right now is just $150. But if you want to up that to four terabytes, you only have to pay a hundred bucks more for the WD Black four terabyte. Once again, PCI Express Gen 4 M.2. And like I said, all of these are linked down in the description. So if you're interested in those, make sure to check that out. And next up for today, we have a very interesting new story about Intel's next gen Core Ultra 9 desktop CPU, specifically the top end model 285K. As you can see right down here, this one comes from a very well known leaker, Raichu on Twitter. And you can see currently we know of the 285K as being Arrow Lake's next gen desktop fastest CPU. But of course, this is the first time that Intel is doing their new Core Ultra branding for desktop. But at least from what we know now, the 285K is that top end SKU. And when it comes to that SKU, what one Raichu actually leaked was about clock boosts. And as you can see right here, it says that the lineup features a clock boost up to 5.7 gigahertz or all core 5.4 gigahertz. And that is for the P cores. But when we move to the efficiency cores, that max boost goes to 4.7 gigahertz or all core 4.6. And what's interesting about this is that obviously if you know anything about the clocks of the 14,900K, you know that this is actually a clock regression over current gen CPUs. In fact, it's a clock regression of a whopping 300 megahertz. But it's actually not all bad news because the actual E-cores gained 
300 megahertz of clocks. And while it may seem like this is ultimately kind of a washout, the good news here is that just like the 14,900K, the 285K comes with twice as many E cores as the P cores. So gaining 300 megahertz for the E cores helps more than it hurts with the P cores having 300 megahertz less. All in all though, it is still at least a little bit of bad news just because we do still have clock regression. And next up, if you saw my recent video on AMD's Tech Day event, you know that I discussed the fact that AMD was overclocking their Ryzen 9000 desktop CPUs with older X670 E boards instead of their next generation X870 E boards. And that more or less led me to believe that the rumors claiming the 800 series boards are set to release after the 9000 series CPUs to be pretty accurate. Well, I just got word back from my official AMD rep, and according to him, as you can see in this email, he says we expect 800 series boards to be available later this year. Basically, he is 100% confirming, given the fact that AMD officially announced the July 31st date for Ryzen 9000 CPUs, this 100% confirms that the next generation motherboards aren't coming until after that release, i.e. later this year. And lastly for today, we have a huge story on NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 5000 GPUs. This one actually comes from the PSU manufacturer, Seasonic, where in their power calculator, they actually listed the entire RTX 5000 series of GPUs. Now, unfortunately, they have since taken it down, but as always, that really just lends more credence to the leak, if anything. And basically what this does is this gave us the TDP numbers for NVIDIA's next-gen GPUs. And if anyone would know those numbers before anyone else besides NVIDIA, of course, would likely be a company like Seasonic. Either way, let's go over these. And of course, you will very quickly notice that NVIDIA is raising TDP. In fact, they're raising it by a ton. As you can see right here, the RTX 5090 is listed at 500 watts, which is a 50 watt boost over the regular 4090. Then we have the 5080, which is now at 350 watts, which means it gains 30 watts over the 4080. The 5070 is at 220 watts, which means it jumps 20 watts over the 4070. Then the 5060 is at 170 watts, which is an unreal 55 watt jump in TDP versus the 40. 60. And then the RTX 5050 comes with a TDP of 100 watts. Not only that, but you'll notice that unlike last time, it looks like every one of these are going to require that 16 pin power connector. And obviously that is a little bit worrisome just because of all the issues the new power connectors had. Though if you've been following the channel, you know that they have since released a new power connector that hopefully does fix those issues. One final thing that I kind of noticed from all of this is the fact that it looks like, at least according to this, that once again, we're gonna be seeing a really big performance gulf between the RTX 5090 and 5080. And the reason for that is just because these two yet again have a very big difference in TD between one another. In fact, this TDP is even bigger than the 4080 to 4090 because we're looking at 150 watt difference versus 130 watts. All in all, it looks like Nvidia is still set to completely destroy PSUs everywhere. So while that does it for today, are you still excited for Nvidia's next gen RTX 5000 series? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out those PC hardware deals down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.